So today we're going to look at how to start up our airplane. We've gotten into the airplane now and we've got our engine start checklist here. Pre-flight and passenger briefing, we want to make sure that's complete. So pre-flight, we should have already done our walk around around the aircraft, checked fuel, oil, all those things, flight controls, everything like that. In our passenger briefing, we want to brief our passengers on how to use the seat belts, how to use the doors, how to unlatch the doors, how the uh, heat and the air vents work, anything else that they might need to know. Here's a button in case um, you, know, you have some sort of medical problem as a pilot and they need to talk to air traffic control and tell them they have a sick pilot. Um, anything that would be pertinent for the passengers to know, you want to let them know at this time. Key Ann Arbor Tower, right turn northbound approved, runway 24 cleared for takeoff. Rare contact, clock 0164, and climb to get 2100. We'll record the hops time, make sure that it's um, the accurate time that we're leaving with so we don't get billed for any time that someone else flew. Circuit breakers, we want to check that they're all in. And oh, looks like we got one popped out here. We'll push that back in. Circuit breakers show you a little bit of white typically when they're popped out. And to reset them, we just push them back in. Seat belts and harnesses, we've got our seat belt on. Our parking brake, we're going to go ahead and set by pulling back on and then pushing down on that little thumb part and then letting go. To release it, we simply just pull back and that little thumb detent will pop off there. So that's released, that is set. Our flaps, we're going to put up. So our handle's up right now, which means our flaps are down, where we want to put our flaps up. So we'll lower our flap handle. Our rotating beacon, we want to make sure is turned on. It should always be left on, but if it was off, we would just go ahead and flip it on. Our carburetor heat is cold or off. It's pushed all the way in. That's carburetor heat on, carburetor heat off. Fuel selector valve is on the desired tank. Our right tank has a little bit more fuel in it, so we'll leave it there. Our mixture is set to full rich by pushing it all the way in. Our throttle, pump it twice if it's hot, three times if it's cold. We just ran the engine, so we'll just give it one pump, but typically two pumps um, or three pumps will do it. Throttle open one eighth, meaning that I pull the throttle all the way out. So if the throttle was open part way, pull the throttle all the way out. Take my finger there, pull it back just about an eighth of an inch and push in. You're just opening the throttle just the tiniest bit, sliding that knob back in the tiniest, tiniest bit, let an eighth of an inch or less. You want to start the engine at as low of an RPM as possible. That helps prolong engine life. It's metal on metal contact when the engine first starts turning over before the oil starts flowing around it. So we really want to start the engine as low of RPM as we possibly can. Master switch we're going to go ahead and turn on. That's going to activate our rotating beacon. We can hear our gyro for our turn bank coordinator spinning up. Our mags, we're going to put the key in and set to left. So we take our ignition key, put it in, turn it over to the left, which is actually just one over from the furthest right position. We have right, left, both. And I know that's confusing. It should be left, right, both, but it's actually off, right, left, both. And we want to go to the left mag to start the engine. We've got our mag set to left. Prop area, visually and verbally clear. We're going to look around. I don't see anyone else. We'll yell through the window, clear prop. And now we're going to press the start button and hold it for five seconds, 10 seconds at the absolute most. Um, and of course, let go when the engine starts. If it doesn't start within five seconds or so, we'll let go and maybe try priming the engine again. Hand on the throttle, button on the, or finger on the start button, still clear. And after we start the engine, we want to go to mags over to both. We want to check our engine oil pressure immediately. If we don't have good oil pressure, we want to shut down the engine right away before the engine gets hurt at all. We'll go back here. Throttle 800 to 1,000 RPM. So it's within that range, 800 to 1,000 RPM. Oil pressure, we check. It's good. It's in the green. Our mags are set to both. Our mixture will lean for ground operations. We'll pull it out about a quarter to a half inch. Lean for ground operations. We'll flip over here. After start, we want to go ahead and turn our avionics on. Our avionics master switch right here. Turn that on. And now our radios and our headsets are going to work and we can talk a lot easier back and forth uh, between pilot and instructor as we uh, maneuver the aircraft around and go through the rest of our checklist. So our avionics are on. We're going to want to obtain our ATIS. So our ATIS frequency, our AWOS, is already dialed in here. 9.275, we're going to hit the flip-flop key, one, two, and now we can Celsius, listen to our weather information. 2.4 Celsius, altimeter 3020, remarks. Runway 1331 closed. 
we'll listen to that all the way through one time. Venice Municipal Airport, automated weather observation 2250 Zulu weather, wind 330 at 6, visibility more than 1, 0, sky condition clear below 1, 2,000, temperature 1, 2 Celsius, 2.4 Celsius, altimeter 3020, remarks. So 3020, we got our altimeter set. One close. The next thing we're going to want to do is note on our knee board or something, the altimeter setting and the winds. Venice Municipal Airport. We'll go ahead and switch back to our CTAP so we can listen to other aircraft taxiing and landing. So we get a visual picture of what's going on at the airport. When we complete the rest of our checklist, our directional gyro, we're going to want to set. That's this guy right here off of our compass. Looks like we're on a 010 heading, so we're going to switch that over to 010 there. Our brakes, we're going to want to test so we could release the parking brake and roll forward a little bit and test the brakes by pulling on them. Make sure that they do stop the aircraft as we expect. Our clearance we will obtain if we were at a Class Charlie, Class Bravo airport, and even some Class Delta airports, we would need to obtain a clearance before taxing and calling ground control. Um, here at this particular airport, without any control tower at the Venice airport, we don't need to obtain a clearance from anyone, and we don't need to call ground control. We're simply going to self-announce as we taxi about the airport. Last thing we want to do, check our transponder, make sure it is set to altitude and 1200. Our pre-taxi tax checklist we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to brief our taxi diagram. Pull out our taxi diagram and brief that we're going from here, and with the winds, we're probably going to want to go ahead and taxi out to runway 5, so we'll taxi via Alpha, Charlie, to Echo, down runway 5, and depart runway 5. We're going to clear the area before we turn anywhere, make sure no one else is around. We're going to scan our instruments as we're taxiing, make sure that they're acting the way they should, especially if you're training for an instrument rating, uh, IFR flying. Our lights will have as required. Since it's getting near dusk, we might want to turn our navigation lights on. And if it was dark out, we might want to turn our landing light or taxi light on to help us see as we drive about. And last thing, seatbelts secure. So our seatbelts are on and secure before we start rolling. We're good to start taxing and head out towards the runway. Detroit on 1895, Detroit on 1895, great, thank you, have a good one.